You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. You're now listening to the Sports Comas Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm your host, Big Q, and on tonight's podcast, that's 14140 on this fantastic Friday, the 26th, 2018, we'll be recapping. 101 96 win over the Charlotte Hornets on the road. A very good win for the Pels. We'll be recapping this game with stats, facts, breakdowns, interviews from L. Gentry, AD, and Boogie Cousins. Also, we'll be previewing the Houston Rockets game in the second segment. So, Without further ado, we'd like to start this program off by giving you an round of applause for joining us today because without you, this wouldn't mean anything. So thank you for joining us today on the Pelican Post Game Report, episode 140. Also, just to make a lot of uh, new listeners aware that the Pelican Post Game Report, uh, uh, created by the Sports Coma, will is always broadcasting every after every Pelicans game, but mostly we have our podcast Mondays at noon and Fridays at 4 p.m. on our social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can tune into those uh, sites to hear the show live. Also, you can comment via social media as well. So please join us for our live uh, podcast as well. Also, we'd like to give a, a big shout out to tonight's show sponsor, ThePoshLifestyle.com www.theposhlifestyle.com uh, You can go there Life spell with a Y L Y F E style.com For all your health needs, music needs Life needs, water filter needs Heirloom seed needs Clothes needs, hair needs for, I mean everything Posh lifestyle is not just a, It's not just a, it's, it's not just a simple thing It's actually a lifestyle Go there and see what they're talking about And of course you can get 10% off from uh, your final purchase when you put in the coupon, the sports coma, you get 10% off on your final purchase. So there we go. Let's get into the game. This game here, the Pelicans winners of three in a row after going to Charlotte, playing a pretty, pretty decent game against the, the, the Charlotte Hornets. They play really well in this game, to be honest with you. I was really, really, really enthused to say the most part about them. I actually picked the Hornets to lose, the Pelicans to lose this game to the Hornets. I thought that they would go and have a stinker on the road, but the Pelicans did not. Pelicans are starting to slowly but surely build to a crescendo here. They've won three in a row in six of the last seven contests. So that's a lot to be happy and proud of this team. Those all-stars of DeMarcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, and even Drew Holiday, who's now averaging over 18 points a contest. Those guys are really playing good basketball. I mean, together is the best that I've ever seen them play together. Of course, they really haven't been together that long. Half of uh, last season and half of this season makes a whole season, I guess, but they've been playing really well together and uh, it's exciting to see them play. Of course, they still have a few things they got to clean up, but of course, We'll get into that as well. The Pelicans, they were able to take down the Hornets 101 to 96. And this game featured 10 lead changes and 15 ties. So it was a back and forth game. It was a very entertaining game, to say the least. Charlotte outscored New Orleans in the paint 52 to 38. Charlotte opened the second quarter on an 18 to 7 run to tie the game at 39 and erased New Orleans' 11 point lead, their largest of the game. With the game tied at 9-2, New Orleans outscored Charlotte 9-4 through the final three minutes of regulation. Holiday scored four and answered, then added two free throws down the stretch to help seal the victory for the Pelicans. And Charlotte was just 18-31 of 31 for 58% from the free throw line. That's what really killed them. They left a lot of points on the free throw line 
that could have helped in the end, that would have helped in the end of this game. They couldn't hit their free throws. The Pelicans did. The Pelicans took advantage of a lot of miscues by the Hornets, and they were able to secure the win. So that was, a, in my estimation, a pretty good day anytime you can do that. Um, here's L. Gentry, coach, the head coach of the Pelicans, L. Gentry, after the Hornets post game. Well, Coach, it was just the other night. You said you've never seen a bad win in your entire career. You guys grinded out a big one here on the road tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I thought we played great defensively. You know, uh, other than the turnovers, I thought we did what we had to to win the game. You know, obviously the 16 turnovers for 20 points is a little disturbing, but for the most part, uh, I thought we played well. And some of the turnovers were good turnovers because we were trying to do the right thing and get the ball to the right people. So uh, those you can live with. But I think anytime you can come and win a game on the road, it's, it's, it's a good win. Speaking of turnovers, you only had one in the fourth quarter and six of your last nine points in the paint, Coach. Yeah, I thought we did a good job. You know, I, I, uh, initially in the game, really for most of the game, they did a great job of fronting the post, uh, having a weak side guy come in. So it was really difficult for us to post the ball to, to AD or to DeMarcus. But I thought we did a good job of reading the situations. Uh, uh, I thought we forced some plays early on, but then I thought we did a good job of just taking what was available to us. How do you evaluate how your bench is playing when you need to get some uh, rest for your big guys? I thought we did a good job. You know, Omir came in and gave us four good minutes. Uh, you know, uh, DeAndre came in. And then, obviously, the guys that have been playing, Jameer played great, uh, I thought, and, and did what we needed for him to do. Uh, uh, Darius has been a steady player for us anyway. So, you know, our bench did a good job, uh, not only, you know, just moving the basketball and creating shots, and then once again, I thought we had a lot of shots that uh, we're capable of making that, making that we just didn't make. But, uh, you know, they had something to do with that. They, they did a great job in their rotation and then running us off the line and making us take an extra li- dribble or try to dribble, penetrate, and create an, another play. How much did you like the fact that you, you had seven guys that scored eight points or more? It was just probably one of the most balanced games of the season offensively. Well, they make you pass the basketball. And, uh, you know, they do a great job of taking your main players uh, out of the game from the standpoint of they don't ever give them a comfort level to play in or space to play in. Uh, every time AD uh, touched the ball or every time DeMarcus put it down, you saw that they sent maybe one, two guys at him. So we got a, we did a good job of just picking it up and then making the easy play. How important is it to have finished strong you know, in a tight game like this, especially on the road? Well, you know, we played, actually we played pretty good on the road this year. And, uh, you know, we've been in games where uh, these type of games, you know, we've kind of let slip away some. So to, to be able to play, and these guys have been playing great basketball. I just watched the uh, Washington game, you know, from a few days ago. And, uh, you know, they've been playing very good basketball. So to come in here and get a win, uh, you know, a lot of people look at records and stuff. I don't look at records. I look at teams and you know, they've been through a lot of injuries and things like that, but this is a, a good basketball team, and they're solid, and, and they've been playing good basketball. So to come in here and get a win, I think, is really good. Coach, Drew had those two drives. Those were pretty big plays there to put you up four. Uh, we'll talk about those two layups. Yeah, uh, you know, I thought he did a great job. Drew, Drew did a great job of uh, – hey, Paul, how you doing? Drew, Drew did a great job of getting the ball to the basket and, uh, and then finishing. Uh, the one thing uh, DeMarcus uh, kept saying to us is that You know, we got to have the guards drive it because uh, Dwight would not leave my body. And so, you know, usually in those situations, he's been such a help guy. But because the markets have the range to shoot threes, he stayed into his body. So Drew was able to turn the corner and get to the basket. That's Coach L. Gentry breaking it down in the game. Pretty accurate analysis on the game uh, seeming good. The underlying and major stat of the game for me was the fact that the Pelicans, like like Coach Gentry said, the reporter astutely did mention that the fact that the Pelicans played the bench deep. They went deep. The bench scored 27 points in this game, which really helped the Pelicans out as well because that means that Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins didn't have to score a ton of points to break a record that haven't been broken in 50 years just to win the game. So kudos to Coach L. Gentry. Of course, you know, if you listen to the Pelican Post Game Report all season long, we've been saying the same thing about this team, that he don't go deep enough into the bench. Eight eight team, eight player rotations against teams like Minnesota that's going 10 or or 12 some nights deep is, is preposterous. You got all these active guys that's on the team. Use them. Why not use them? Use them for their benefit. 
uh, Andy Davis, them, he didn't break score, uh, break many records. But look how comfortable they won this game because they had a full team uh, display. He mentioned Amir Asik, who came off the bench for four minutes in the game. I I, I had the argument la- uh, two podcasts ago in the Freebiz podcast that Amir Asik should play at least five minutes a game. I don't care if you got stretch fives or fours out there or not. You need Amir Asik. He's your best. He's a, your best bet backup center. He makes ten million dollars a year. He's not a scrub. He's not. He's not terrific or great. But you remember, he's coming off this sickness, and he has to get back into the flow of the game by sitting him down for seven, eight games before you play him the next game. It's, it's just stupid. You know, I can't think of a better word than that. It's just not smart. Dante Cunningham. 20 minutes, he had nine points off the bench. Of course, I'm just discussing the bench. Darius Miller had eight, eight from Jermail Nelson, who played 17 minutes. Ian Clark had 12. And even DeAndre Liggins, who signed a second uh, 10-day contract with the Pelicans, got in there for five minutes. And that's what I'm talking about, using those guys. Use those guys off that bench. Use Amir Asik. Use DeAndre Liggins. Use uh, Sheik Diallo. They ain't use him this time, but use those guys. I don't care if it's five or 10 minutes apiece. They can help. Anthony Davis and them really rest this game. And of course, DeMarcus Cousins, who played all that minutes last game against the Bulls, had only 30 minutes. He had 16 points in his game, 13 rebounds, played pretty good. But Drew Holiday was the guy that you got to give the comeuppance to. Of course, him and Anthony Davis both scored 19, but Drew Holiday was fantastic toward the end of this game. He sealed the game. And throughout this entire game, he played defense against their best player, Kimba Walker, even though Kimba was still able to score uh, 20 uh, points and get seven assists in this game. But Drew Holiday was all over that guy. And many times he played Nicholas Batum too. He guarded him. He guarded uh, Michael Gilchrist. I mean, he played, he was guarding guys uh, like J- uh, Jeremy Lamb. He was guarding those guys and having an impact. And I got to give a lot of credit this game to Drew Holiday because when Davis and Cousins were kind of comfortable in doing anything, it was really the solid player, Drew Holiday, and even Etwan Moore stuck in 11 points. Looking at the uh, the field goals made, the Pelicans shot 45% on the game. They had about 9 of 26 from downtown for 35%. Like I told you, they were beat on the uh, board in the paint, 52 to 48. They were out-rebounded 62 to 52. And the thing that really stuck out to me, like I said, was the free throws. The Pelicans converted 14 of 18 while the Charlotte Hornets went to the line 31 times and only converted 18 of those for 58%. So they really shot themselves in the foot, and the Pelicans just, I ain't going to say cruise. They had to take it from them, but this was a pretty good win. Let's listen to what DeMarcus Cousins has to say about the win. Here's Cousins. Well, it was a good team effort. Um, you know, um, I think everybody played a part in this win tonight. Uh, uh, some mental mistakes throughout the game, but, you know, we stayed poised. We stayed together. Um, down the stretch, we did it on the defensive end. Uh, we got stops when we needed to, and, uh, you know, we pulled out a good, solid roll win. You guys have been really good in, in crunch time in the last few weeks, winning a lot of close games, winning in overtime. It seemed like that was the same thing tonight. Um, what did you think of, for, for example, Drew? It, just, it seemed like he, he took advantage of, of, of the defense and got inside and made some big passes. Well, uh, you know, uh, Dwight, you know, he didn't want to leave my body at night. And, um, you know, that's their rim protector. That's the guy that claws up the pay for him. And, um, you know, you can kind of tell his main concern was to uh, make sure I didn't score or, or basically, um, what's up? What shoes? My shoes? Yeah. Oh, shoddy, shoddy. <laughs> Bring me my shoes so I can sign them. I got to give them to coach. Oh, they're already on the truck. My bad. We'll get, we'll get you want me to sign a pair of Jameers? We're going to ship them to him, Coach. Yeah. Right. So, um, what was I saying? Um, we're talking about Dwight didn't want to come. Oh, yeah, there. Dwight didn't really want to leave my body tonight. No, he wanted it, you know, he wanted it to be a you know, tough night for me offensively, and uh, we just kind of took advantage of that. I noticed it, and I told Drew the paint was wide open. Uh, you know, Drew's a big guard. He's, I don't think anybody in the league can guard him one-on-one, and uh, so I'm just take advantage of it. Take take advantage of the paint being wide open. You mentioned the defense, and you were happy with that. What, what, what were some of the things that you'd like to just hold another team, good offensive team, to a low number? Uh, I think guys did a good job of containing Kimba, for the most part. Uh, 
you know, there's only so much you can do with a player of that, of that caliber. And, um, you know, the Wings did a good job of, you know, keeping guys contained, you know, the role guys contained and um, just solid all around. And um, down the stretch, we made it tough. On them, so. That's the Marcus Cousins. He said Dwight didn't want to leave his side. And Dwight played pretty good in this game, actually, man. They, they, you know, he really did actually have a pretty decent game against the Marcus Cousins in this game. Played 37 minutes and got 22 points, 16 rebounds. Even had three blocks. So Dwight Howard played very well against Boogie's Cousins, uh, 16 and uh, 13. So despite the fact Boogie probably still tired from that game against Chicago, the double overtime win. But anyway... We got Anthony Davis in the interview coming up on the other side of the break. We also we're gonna, we have some more information about this game, and then we'll get into the matchup against Houston tonight in the Smoothie King Center. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Stay with us. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from Chief Balance. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. That's right. Welcome back to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Little interesting all-star news from this side of the pond for the Pelicans. You know, of course, you know, LeBron James, the greatest player on the planet, some say. I'm inclined to agree. He chose Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins on his team. Of course, you know, they're not doing East versus West. They they picked two guys, uh, Steph Curry and LeBron James, and had those guys select their own teams. And, uh, and, Mark, and uh, LeBron James shows wisely Anthony Davis, who's starting, DeMarcus Cousins, who's starting, and he also assigned, uh, uh, got those. Uh, how, if, my question is, if you're Steph Curry, how do you not get one of the big two? I mean, I don't understand. How did you let LeBron James pick a fantasy team by having Anthony Davis himself and DeMarcus Cousins on that team? That's arguably three well, you know, Steph Curry is probably one of the, some people say Kyrie Irving is the best point guard in the game. Some people say Steph. Of course, Steph got the rings. Uh, but Kyrie Irving, to me, is more of a total, uh, is probably the best point guard in the game. I have to say it. Steph is close there. Anthony Davis is the best power forward or stretch forward, whatever you want to call it. DeMarcus Cousins is the best center in the game. And LeBron James is the best player on the planet. So you got three of the top f- <laughs> 10 players on the planet playing for your team. And I don't know how Steph let, uh, how he 
didn't pick either one of those guys. But anyway, Anthony Davis, uh, DeMarcus Cousins you know, on the team with LeBron. Also, it's Bradley Beal, LaMarcus Aldridge, Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook, Victor Oladipo, who made it. It's Christophs Porzingis and John Wall. So, wow. Steph don't have a shabby team. He got people like Giannis Antiskun Popol, or I'm just going to say Greek Freak. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, James Harden, Joel Embiid, Damian Lillard, uh, Jimmy Butler, Draymond Green, Kyle Lowry, Clay Thompson, Carl Anthony Towns, and L. Holford. Of course, that's the all-star news as far as that goes. Let's get back into this Pelicans matchup against the Charlotte Hornets. That happened Wednesday night. Of course, the Pelicans, uh, you know, didn't play perfect, but they did they did enough to win this game. You know, they, they really did. They slipped in the second, you know, losing the second quarter about, uh, losing it. Uh, what was it? What did they lose it by eight points or so? And then the third quarter, they usually have a massive collapse and other team really beats them. They didn't, they actually only scored 20 while holding the the Hornets to 20. So they didn't have that third quarter collapse. They were cognizant of that. And they took it to him in the fourth, thanks to Drew Holiday, and a cute couple of key stops by Anthony Davis, who had a block, some rebounds. DeMarcus Cousins had a couple of rebounds, some uh, a shot blocks down in the, the critical moments of the game to help carry the Pelicans, who are now 26 and 21, 13 and 12 away. They're sixth in the Western Conference uh, playoff race, sixth overall, and third in the Southwest standings they're about four and a half games behind san antonio who's winners of two in a row and of course houston who is 34 and 12 sits on top of the southwest standing they have the second best record in the west and they're on a four game winning streak of their own but we're going to preview that game in a few minutes let's get into this finish up this pelican matchup of course like we told you by anthony davis he had a pretty stellar night uh, 19 points. Uh, well, that's probably pedestrian numbers for a guy like Anthony Davis. He finished with 19, six, uh, 19.6 rebounds and four assists in 37 minutes of action. They played completely as a team. I'm very happy because you need wins like this where your bigs don't overexert themselves. They had a leisurely game, 19 from Davis, 16 from Cousins. Drew Holiday stepped up, played well. He had nine. Uh, e, uh, Rajon Rondo threw in nine points, 11 from Etwine Moore. Then you had the bench guys that chunked in 27 as a collective. So I like that easier win. Plus, they took advantage of a team that's had a bunch of turnovers in this game and really didn't help themselves in this game. The turnovers Pelicans finished with 16 turnovers for 20 points, 20 opposition points. The Hornets had 14 for 16 opposition points with a four point gap. But what really hurted the team was at the free throw line, where if the Hornets would have knocked down uh, at least five more free throws, at least another six or seven, they were 18 of 31. That's unacceptable. And I'm pretty sure uh, the coach show who uh, Steve Clifford got on their butts for that. But anyway, that's their concern. Our team is the Pelicans. Let's listen to what Anthony Davis says after this Pelican win over the Hornets. Yeah, I mean, every win is a good win for us. Stuff that we can go back and look at and try to correct, but <clears throat> um, we'll take any type of win. What do you think about just the overall performance of the team? It had so much balance scoring and it probably as many guys have gotten involved in a game as there's been maybe all season tonight. Yeah, it was a tough one. I mean, <clears throat> they were trying to take me and DeMarcus out and the other guy just came in and made plays. So it was a great team win tonight. Um, you know, this is a team that's, of course, fighting to get back to where they were. Um, so we just trying to stay where we are, you know, and improve as well. But, um, you know, we want to come in and get this one. It was tied with about two minutes or so left, and then Drew made a couple huge plays and a couple free throws. What did you see there in that part of the game? Uh, we just went to our go-to plays um, and have him make plays. And um, we got some good looks at the rim. Layups made them. Uh, then after that, you know, we got some stops and it was just, <clears throat> you know, playing defense after that and making free throws. What did you like about um, overall, not, maybe not just the end of the game, but just overall defensively that you know another team that you held down to a pretty low number? Yeah, um, you know, we just taking pride in our defense, um, whatever it takes. Uh, you know, we just gotta come out of the third quarter a little bit better. But um, I think overall defensively we've been playing pretty good and um, we gotta keep it going, uh, especially Friday. That's a tough Houston team, but um, this team, 
you know, can score as well. So we just had to make sure that we lock in defensively. That's Anthony Davis telling them we just got to make sure we lock in defensively, and that's absolutely the case because, to be honest, but you look at the Pelicans, and uh, we might as well just cruise right into the, the the preview section of the Hornets. I mean, the the, the Pelicans and the Rockets. Now it's the fact that the Rockets beat the Pelicans back in middle of December on the 11th, I believe. They beat them by seven points. It was a high scoring effect. I think it was 130 to 123 or something like that. Something like that. If I check my notes correctly, I remember it. It was a very high scoring affair. And I think I am right. I'm going to look over my notes uh, and make sure that, yeah, that's actually right. December the 11th of last year. At Houston, they beat uh, the Pelicans 130 to 123 by seven. And to look at some of the statistics from this game, and I'm going to go over a few of them with you uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes and I offer my prediction toward the end is all time against the Rockets, the Pelicans are 24 and 32. They're better at home beating them. They're, they got a home record against Houston, winning them 15 to 12 against a road record of 9 and 20. So they do better at home against the Rockets than away. The last five games, the Rockets have had the the Pelicans card, one of four. Pelicans only beat them one out of four. And the last 10, even worse than that, two out of eight. So, I mean, the Rockets have been consistently better than the Pelicans over the last three or four years. So it's not really any surprise there. This year, they have a really excellent record. If you look at some things here in this game, Houston's went over New Orleans uh, back in 2016. The Rockets set NBA records for three-pointers with 24 and attempts in 61. Shot them out the gym, blew them up. I remember that game. In four games against Houston last season, Andy Davis averaged about 26 points a game, shot 51% from the field, had 11 rebounds, two assists, a steal and a half, and a block and a half. In their first meeting of the season, Pelicans guard Etwine Moore recorded a career-high 36 points going 15 of 20 from the field, a career-high of 6 of 8 from deep. Drew Holiday scored a season-high 37 for New Orleans. Rajon Rado had recorded a triple-double, 13 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists. DeMarcus Cousins added 24 and 14 assists in the 30th, in the 30th of his career, and New Orleans bench only produced three points, which they can't do that. Let's hope. And I mean, hope that Elvin Gentry, the head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, follows the same mindset of resting his bigs in this Houston game. Now, I know it might be one of those games where you can't get too many of the bench guys in it, but let's hopefully they can play some of these bench guys more. And I'm not talking about Ian Clark, who's getting minutes, or Darius Miller, who's getting minutes, or Jameer Nelson who's getting minutes or Dante Cunningham. Those are the four regulars. But we let's get another guy in there. Let's sneak a Sheik Diallo in there. Let's get, Omer, better yet, let's let Omir Asik get in there. That's his former team he came from. Let's let him get in there and let him get a little burn here. Let, let, let him get in there and get a little bump against uh, Nene. You know, let those guys rest and play your bench mode to kind of give them that advantage because they're going to need their energy against a, a sharp shooting team like this against this uh, team. Of course, Anthony Davis didn't play in this game. I think he was hurt that last game. Had he had played, the Pelicans would have definitely won that game. He was hurt. Houston had four players that finished with 20 points in that game. Remember, Clinton Capella had 28 points. He had most of their points just on alley-oops, just constant alley-oops, 28 points. Eric Gordon came off the bench, torched him. He loves torching the Pelicans. He hated being down here. I don't know why Dell Demps kept him. And you can see the, the the city didn't appreciate him, and he didn't care. He went there, and every time he plays the Pelicans, he tries to uh, nuke him. So uh, he had 27. James Harden had 26. Chris Paul had 20. So they had four guys in the 20s, and they, just, and they barely won by seven. So that was interesting. Harden also added 17 assists for the Rockets. And like I said, most of those were to Quentin, Clinton Capella. Of course, Al Gentry don't have many winning records against anybody, he, but he's got a winning record against Houston. 21 to 15, uh, 58% against the Rockets. Dan Tony's 26 and 12 all time against the New Orleans Hornets or Pelicans, whatever. The Rock, and then this is another funny thing, people, is the, how you look at the, the connections between the franchises. Weird. So many connections here. So many connections. You got to start with Chris Finch who served on the Rockets staff from 2011 to 2016. Prior to that, 
Uh, he was the head coach of Houston's G League affiliate uh, with the Rio Grande Valley Vipers uh, from 2009 to 2000. He even he actually led that team to a championship and owned and, and had coach of the year honors the previous year. So also you got Eric Gordon and Ryan Anderson. They were both former Pelicans. Gordon played in 221 regular season games for the Pelicans. He averaged about 15 points a game for us. Anderson was another big player that played for us for a long time from 2012 to 2016. He was average 16 points a game, six rebounds. He was a terrific sharpshooter for the Pelicans, won a lot of games for the Pelicans. He ranks all, he's the all time leader in reserve points in Pelicans history is that Ryan Anderson. Also Trevor Ariza who played for the, for the, Pelicans, or I guess you could say the Hornets uh, during that time when he was here. He appeared in 116 games for the for the New Orleans from 2010 to 2012, averaging about 11 points a game. You also have Chris Paul. Of course, you know he was drafted fourth overall back in 2005. Wow. And of course, he's one of the best in franchise history. Third all-time in the points. First in assists. First in steals. First in free throws. First in free throws attempted. All that beautiful stuff. Chris Paul is just an excellent player. You remember he was traded to the Clippers for Eric Gordon, not on the same team, so figure that, right? And also, you know, two-way player forward. Remember Jalen Jones? The team released Jalen Jones, the little developmental forward. Guess who he ended up with? The Rockets. So he's there. And then, of course, how could we forget Amir Asik, who was a member of the Rockets from 2012 to 14. He appeared in 130 games. With them, averaged about eight point eight and a half points a game, ten rebounds, pretty good numbers. If we can get that from Amir Asik off the bench, that would be terrific. If, but he needs the time to be able to even much play. And then, of course, Elvin Gentry served on Houston Rocket head coach Mark D'Antoni's staff when he was in Phoenix. So these guys know each other, and it's going to be an interesting matchup, not to say the least. So I say all that gobbly goop to come back and says this: that the Rockets. This is going to be an interesting matchup because the Rockets average 114 points a contest. That is a lot of pointage. They average 114 a game. They only allow you to have 106 a game. So they play a little bit of better defense uh, than what we accustomed to. They shoot 46% from the field. They average about 44 rebounds a game. They average 22 assists a game. They get four and a half blocks a game. They get nine steals a game. They're currently on the four game winning streak. They're seven and three the last 10 games. Looking at the Pelicans, who average 111 a game, and they allow you to score 110 and a half, and they shoot 48 and a half percent from the field. They have about 43 rebounds a game, 26 assists, five blocks, seven and a half steals and they are currently on a three game winning streak and they are seven and three the last 10 games. So there you got it. You got one guy on four game, one guy on three game, somebody, something's got to give here. The Rockets of course is the top team in the Southwest division where the Pelicans are in third place behind them. The Pelicans, like I said earlier, the Rockets, this will be the second of four contests they'll play. The next two are going to be in March on the 17th and the 24th. And this is be this is a very important this will be a very important series between these guys because Houston 34 and 12, the Pelicans are eight and a half games back in the Southwest standings as it were. So it'll be a good win for the Pelicans. Not only do they stockpile another win to get the five wins and be and, and win seven of eight games and just steamrolling toward the the all-star break would be an awesome win to get over the Rockets before they prepare for the Clippers. This would be a a terrific confidence building win because you can see incrementally the Pelicans are figuring it out. They're starting to figure it out. They're starting to really uh, get things together here. And, you know, I've said it before. I was wrong about a few things dealing with the Pelicans about picking them. But, you know, that's a lot of people don't. If you're telling me you're picking these games, you you I don't believe you. Correctly, I, you got to be crazy because the Pelicans are so up and down, it's it's ridiculous. But they have found some type of ground now where they're playing a hell of a lot better than they played in a long time. You know, they had some serious wins where they had to gut it through some of these wins. You know, the, the many overtime games. What is it, like four of the last six or something like that? They did win in overtime. The Chicago game took balls to win that game. 
you know, and when I was looking at it from the fourth quarter, I was like, there's no way they're going to win. They're going to do their Pelican thing and just disappear. No, but they gutted it out. Anth- uh, DeMarcus Cousins got in there and made it happen. Anthony Davis was battling. He fouled out. DeMarcus Cousins took the game on his shoulder and ultimately won it for him in a, a record-shattering performance, you know, scoring 30, 20, and, and what, 10? Breaking in only like three or four guys that did that. And then the big one was the 40, 20, and 10, which was only two guys to ever do that. And the last dude to do that was 50 years ago. But looking at the Rockets, the uh, the top scorers on his team uh, is James Harden. He averages about 30 points a game. Eric Gordon is 19 a game off the bench. Wow. Wow. 18, uh, almost 19 for Chris Paul. Clint Capella gives him 14. Gerald Green who was new, who played, he was just signed and he played 11 games, is averaging 14 points a game. Trevor Reza averages 12 and Ryan Anderson averages 10. And then, and then they averages seven off the game. So they have, this is amazing. They have about seven scorers and doubles figures for them. This is a tough team. They average 104 a, a, a contest. So with that being said, who is going to win the contest, Big, Big Q? We got you on a record. The last time, the last game, I picked them to lose against Charlotte because I said they're going to do their Pelicans two-step. They win one, they lose one. Can't say that. They've built up something here. Confidence. Drew Holiday starting to look like a perennial, starting to look like an all-star. He averaged about 18-plus points a game. You have DeMarcus Cousins putting historic outings. Anthony Davis, suspect, uh, spectacular as usual. Hey, yo, Pierre, then they got the bitch getting involved. If they can have, if they can kind of, I know they're not going to cut the turnover down. It just belongs with this style of play. But if they can hit more free throws, get the, the quality players the rest they need, like they did in the Charlotte matchup, play more of this bench, I can anticipate them beating this team. But will they do it? I'm going to go out on a limb and say this. the Pelicans will get it done against the Houston Rockets in Smoothie King Center tonight. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that, which is not really a limb because they actually played them well statistically and historically Yo, well yeah, in that building. So that's my call. I'm going to go with my Pelicans uh, beating the Rockets and, 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 and keep building and keep building that win total. We're winning five straight, seven of the, the last eight games. So that's my call. Anyway, Thank you for joining us tonight on the Pelican Post Game Report. Please go to our, uh, look in the uh, description section and support our sponsors. Join our social media. Click subscribe and like our channel for more content. Even go to patreon.com and donate to help build the platform as well. Thank you. Peace. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, all in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a Posh Lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution, and there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.